Hey, what's up everybody? This is Marin. Welcome back to our course on Beginning Realm on iOS. And in this part of the series, we're going to learn how to create some objects, start them on disk, and then read them back and use them in your app. Let's get started. This is what the project will look like once you have finished uh, this video tutorial. Now, to save objects to your Realm file or to read objects back, you first need to grab a reference to your app's Realm instance. And so the easiest way to do that is to just create a new Realm class. And that will open the default Realm for your application, which is in the Documents directory. Realm will figure out all the path and will just create a file if there is not one already in there. And it will do all of this, it will, just, it will do it automatically for you uh, once you create a new Realm class in your code. Now, if you want to have your app's Realm file in a different location than the default one, you can just specify a file URL in the realms in it. Or if you want to even do even more configuration, uh, even more custom settings to your realm, then you need to create a custom realm.configuration structure. Uh, and you can specify a lot of different properties in that structure. You can tell a lot of things about how you want to use your file uh, to realm. You can open a realm in a read-only mode. You can say that you want an encrypted realm, or you can specify a custom URL, as we already said, uh, and so forth and so forth. Check out the realm.configuration structure uh, to see all the possibilities. Let's move on and see how you can create new data objects in memory and store them on disk. Since your Realm objects are just normal Swift classes, you can create a new one like usual by calling its init and then setting the values on the properties you want to uh, set. You have the object now in memory. Let's persist it on disk. All writes, all modifications to persistent objects happen in a write transaction. The Realm class has a convenient method called write that takes in a closure. So any modifications, any code in general that you put into that closure parameter will get executed inside a Realm ACID write transaction. So let's have a look at the code. You grab an instance of Realm and call Realm write inside the closure. You add a newly created objects by providing it to the realm.add method. And that's it. Now the object is persisted on disk and that location is the only source of truth for the data of that object. If you want to modify some data later on on that same object, you need to do that from within a write transaction because modifying that object is de facto modifying the data on disk. There is no copy of that data left in memory. You always have one version, one copy of the object. And once you persist it, once you add it to a realm, that location, that copy is located on disk. You don't need to manually refresh or synchronize data between the disk and memory. Everything is done automatically for you. Let's quickly have a look at getting objects back from disk. In the previous video, in this course, you saw how to declare one of the class properties as primary key. The quickest and easiest way uh, to get objects back from disk uh, is to ask Realm for an object of certain type uh, and provide the primary key value of that uh, object. To do this, you use Realm object of type for primary key method. Uh, and finally, if you don't need a given object anymore, from within a dry transaction, you can call Realm delete and delete that object from the realm file. And that delete method also takes in a, a number of objects that you can delete at once or a collection or a, a search result set of objects, uh, many different options worth exploring. Okay, so now it's time to create some new objects and store them on disk. We're gonna keep working on the chatter application. If you haven't worked through the challenges from the last video, just make sure that you're opening the starter project for that video that already includes the code that, well, you should have written <laughs> yourselves uh, in the challenges for last video. Okay, so make sure that you have user.swift open and uh, we have already a convenience in it, the data properties, dynamic properties, uh, some meta information, but now we're gonna add some arbitrary methods here that will help us uh, use the user class more efficiently. Now, this is completely on our own accord. Uh, we don't, we're not overriding any existing realm methods, so 
Those methods can be located also somewhere else. It's just really useful though for the one where we're going to write to be in that user class. We're essentially adding a create default user method, which will create a default user in case there isn't one in Realm already. And so it takes a Realm instance as a parameter so we can just get it and work with it without worrying about initializing it. And that method will create and persist a new user to the disk and then return that object as well as its result. So just as we discussed in the slides, let's create a new default user with the name me. That will be, of course, your own user. Okay, so this will create a new user object in memory. Though uh, Before we explicitly write it to disk, it will still be only in memory. So let's do that. Let's just write it right away to the disk because we already have a realm instance as the parameter of the method. So we can just call write on it and persist that object right away, just as we saw in the slides. Okay, so we are calling realm write. And within the closure, where uh, this is basically the write transaction that is allowed to modify the realm file on disk, we say realm add this new object that we have only in memory, add it now to the realm file and persist it on disk. And so as soon as the write transaction ends, that object is already managed. Now it's being managed by realm being persisted on disk. And uh, of course, now that we're done with that, we just need to return the object as well, because we're going to be using it from another method. And so I'm using here an exclamation mark. Realm write can fail in very few cases, only in case that, for example, your device is out of space, basically, it's uh, out of free space, or your disk is corrupt. And so, uh, you know, in some cases, you can pretty much safely use try exclamation mark. Of course, in prediction apps, better use some kind of either question mark and check for the result of that operation or uh, some kind of like a do catch statement. In this video, we're going to focus on Realm itself. Okay, we have the method that creates a new user. Now let's create a new method that will check if a default user exists and return it if so, and otherwise use that uh, method that we just wrote and create a new one. Okay, that new user will check if a default user exists, and if not, a call create default user that we just defined. We're going to use object of type for primary key that we already discussed to basically check for any user that has a name of me. Again, I'm using for convenience, I'm using here string literals, any, any, any strings in your app that you use more than once. Uh, of course, it's more it's safer to extract as some kind of constants. Now, um, calling that object of type for primary key method, it might return nil in case there is no object with that primary key. And in that case, I'm going to use the uh, nil call listing operator. And if no object like this is found, then I'm just going to call create default user in realm, which will create a new one and then return it. And so I have this default method, user method now on user object that I can call at any time and it will return me the default user or the very first time the user runs the app, it will create one for me. We can check this very quickly. We can run the app. Okay, now the very first time the, the app runs, Realm will create the structure will basically read the structure of your objects and create that on the file on disk, but it will not insert any data, of course, by itself. And so to actually create the user, we need to call that default user from somewhere. To do that, open the feed tab view controller and go to the view that load method. So here we're going to just call user.default user in realm. And of course, we need to also initialize the realm. Let realm try realm like so, and then provide that uh, as the parameter in here. And so before we you know, start fetching messages and uh, start showing things on screen, we make sure to call once default user, and that will just create the default one if we don't have it already. Now, in your own apps, if you, you got to think really hard. Uh, if you need to provide some default data, where do you do it? 
for this project, I know that nothing really happens before you did load in the feed table view controller. In your own projects, it might be different. Now there's a strategies about providing default initial data in your realm file, like the default user in here, in the intermediate realm on iOS video course later on. You can, you can move on to that later on. Okay, and so this will guarantee the first time we run the feed view controller, that will create also a default user for us. And so if you run the app, that will have created a default user in the realm file. Now, how can we check that? Well, head to the Mac App Store or the Realm GitHub repository and download the Realm Browser app. This is the app that helps you review, you know, what kind of data do you have in your Realm file. I can't recommend enough another helper app, not by Realm, by a third party developer, but very useful called Sim Folders and Sim Folders with a PH. And so what Sim Folders does is to install this menu, menu item in here that shows you which are the active apps that you're developing in your iPhone simulator. And then for the ones that do have a realm file like so, it will show a menu item called open database with realm browser. And that will reach out into the simulator and open the default realm file for your app. Now, Here's the file that we have right now for Chatter. And as you can see, we have message and user with all the properties that we've defined in our code. And in here, if you click on user, you will see that uh, there is one row here in this table representing the one object that we've persisted. We have one string property called, uh, it's also a primary key, and the value is me and send is zero. And now we can create more objects, persist them, and see how they appear in the Realm Browser app as well. So to do that, move to the data controller Swift file. It's, it's the mock API, it's a mock networking class. Uh, there's a start and a stop method that will then use a timer to repeatedly call fetch and fetch gets some fake JSON so that you can use it to create realm objects. Now let's, let's enter the code in here to convert that JSON structure to realm objects and persist them on disk. Realm objects have by default a convenience initializer that takes one parameter called value. And this is very, very good for prototyping. It basically expects a dictionary object in here and will try to map the keys of the dictionary to the properties that you have defined. And so that's very good for prototyping and for a quick JSON work like that, like what we're having right now. I know that the JSON, the, the objects that come in have the same keys as the properties I've defined for message. So I can just basically take the JSON object provided here in the custom initializer that takes a value parameter and bam, there you go. You have a message property uh, object. And this is how I convert all the JSON objects to realm objects. And now in new messages, I have an array of ready to be persisted realm objects. I open a write transaction and now in here, I just need to persist all the objects and there's no need to loop over that array of objects, you can just provide the whole array to the realmat method and that will persist them all. And that's it for that method. Now, the rest of the code that is, was already in the starter project will start the timer and then repeatedly call fetch. That will generate some mock JSON and uh, that our new code will convert it to realm objects and this code will every time persist those new objects to the disk so we can run quickly to have a look. Um, there's nothing showing up in our UI, but we can switch to the Realm Browser and just observe the message table. You can see now there were two new message objects that were created with the JSON data that we had. Now we can wait a few seconds until the timer fires again. There it goes. Uh, that added another three messages like that. And so you can see the Realm Browser is really useful when you want to monitor what's going on in real time live in your uh, Realm file. That's it for this video tutorial. And now we have a challenge waiting for you. Your challenge this time is to add the ability to the project to persist newly created messages into the Realm file on this. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.